Hey there, fellow researchers and aspiring Marie Curie applicants. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll guide you through the key elements that make up a proposal and how best to structure it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future episodes this summer with tips and guidance on Marie Curie proposals. Let's get started. Have you structured your proposal yet? If not, you're in the right place. The clock is ticking and the 2023 application window is fast approaching. In this tutorial, I outline the structure of the Part B1 for the 2023 application page by page. I hope you find it useful. When it comes to formatting your proposal, it is essential to adhere to the specified guidelines. First and foremost, make sure to use the A4 paper format instead of the letter format commonly used in the United States. The A4 format is the standard in Europe and most other parts of the world. Font selection plays a significant role in the readability of your proposal. To ensure that you are following the guidelines, use the Times New Roman font set at 11 point size, adopt single line spacing throughout the document, and set the margins at 15 millimeters on all sides. Remember, Paying attention to the overall format may seem like a small detail, but it contributes to the professionalism and clarity of your proposal. On the first page, where you start with Part 1, Excellence, dedicate the entire page to Section 1.1, Quality and Pertinence of the Project's Research and Innovation Objectives, and the extent to which they are ambitious and go beyond the state of the art. Begin with a brief introduction to your topic and why it is important. As this part will be the most extensive and serve as a semblance of a literature review, ensure that you allocate some space as footnotes for the references. The remaining two sections will focus on the research and innovation objectives and the state of the art. In the objectives section, you need to discuss the quality and pertinence of the objectives. Why are these objectives crucial at this point in history? These objectives should be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound as much as possible. They should have specific measurable outcomes that can be verified. Additionally, they should demonstrate that they are realistically achievable within two or three years of the project. Consider adding a visually appealing graph or figure to outline a process, the research topic, or the project itself. This can enhance the presentation and understanding of your proposal. In the state of the art section, describe how the project surpasses the state of the art and emphasize its ambition. Provide a reason or explanation for why or how the project is ambitious. On this page, the acronym for the project should also be included. Acronyms for MSCA projects are typically one word. You can find the acronyms on CORDIS and I will provide a link to it in the description box. The second page can be utilized for the first four sections of Part 1.2, Soundness of the Proposed Methodology. In the Overall Methodology section, describe the concepts, models, or assumptions being tested. Explain how these methods are related to the research and innovation objectives discussed on the first page. Provide an example of a novelty introduced in your methodology and explain how this novelty helps overcome a specific challenge. The guidelines suggest that some form of methodological innovation is expected from the proposals. Move on to the integration of methods and disciplines to pursue the objective section. Here, you need to emphasize how your project will be interdisciplinary and list the relevant disciplines that will be involved. Explain how your project will make use of these disciplines to achieve its objectives. In the Gender Dimension section, discuss how your project takes into account gender and other diversity aspects. I have a separate video about considering the gender dimension for a project, which I will link above. Next, in the Open Science Practices section, explain that research outputs will be made available as preprints. Mention one of the preprint servers. Discuss the Prospero registry if it is relevant to your project. Additionally, mention reproducibility such as making code accessible through GitHub if applicable. Assert that all publications will be open access and if possible, 
mention the involvement of knowledge actors in research, for instance, talk about citizen science through SciStarter if it applies to your project. Approximately one-third of page 3 should be devoted to research data management and the management of other research outputs. Here, you need to mention that you will have a data management plan likely created with the assistance of the research data management teams at your host institution. If possible, ask your supervisor to connect you with the research data management team at the host institution and begin creating the data management plan, which can be included in Part B2 of the application. In this section, be specific about how the data will be stored and where. For example, you could mention specific data archives, such as the UK Data Archive. Highlight that your data will have a digital object identifier and explain how other researchers will be able to access it. Mention the use of controlled vocabularies, if applicable, or how metadata will be created and managed. Additionally, discuss the reusability of the data, the licenses that will be applied, and whether there will be an embargo period and its duration. All of these details can be further refined in collaboration with professionals from the research data management teams at your host institution. The remaining portion of the page will be dedicated to describing the supervisor and the planned training activities. To provide a comprehensive biography for your supervisor, describe their expertise in relation to the proposal's topic area, highlight their publications, grants, and awards, particularly those relevant to the proposed research. You can even discuss age indexes, citation counts, invited lectures, and their previous supervision of successful Marie Curie Fellows. Name specific and preferably moderately famous scholars with whom the supervisor collaborates nationally and internationally. Mention the PhD students and postdoctoral fellows who have worked with the supervisor. In the planned training activities section, indicate that you will develop a career development plan in collaboration with your supervisor. Discuss the research, management, organization, and horizontal and transferable skills that will be acquired through specific activities. This section can serve as a summary with more detailed information provided in the subsequent two-way knowledge transfer section. Ensure that while some aspects may overlap, they do not sound repetitive. Devote the entire page 4 to knowledge transfer to the researcher. Come up with three to four knowledge transfers, which could include training through research, methodological training, horizontal skills development, and more. For each of these transfers, you need to describe the following. Who, what, when, where, and how it will happen. Specify the individuals providing the training by giving their names. Explain what will be learned and provide specific details on how this learning will be achieved. Similarly, devote the entire page 5 to knowledge transfer to the host and describe the specific details of these knowledge transfers. This section also serves to highlight your expertise that you can share. Devote one-third of page 6 to the quality and appropriateness of the researcher's professional experience, competences, and skills. In a manner similar to how you provided the bio sketch for your supervisor, you need to describe your own achievements. Focus particularly on your accomplishments within the project area that you are proposing. Discuss your theoretical and methodological expertise and provide examples of publications, grants, and awards that demonstrate your proficiency. Highlight your collaborations, especially those that can be relevant and beneficial for the proposed project. The remaining portion of the page can be dedicated to Part 2.1 credibility of the measures to enhance the career perspectives and employability of the researcher and contribution to his her skills development. In the subsequent sections, describe how your theoretical and methodological skills will help you build your research portfolio and how your horizontal and transferable skills will contribute to creating your engagement and impact portfolio. Emphasize how your fellowship will enable you to expand your network. Then, explain how these portfolios and networks will support your short-term and long-term career goals. Describe these career goals in connection with the developed skills. 
Page 7 will be dedicated to Part 2.2, Suitability and Quality of the Measures to Maximize Expected Outcomes and Impacts, as outlined in the Dissemination and Exploitation Plan, including communication activities. First, mention that you have a Dissemination and Exploitation Plan, which you will describe in this section. Then, proceed to describe it in separate paragraphs for each target group. These target groups can include the scientific community, end users, financial actors, the general public, policymakers, corporate actors, NGOs, and other stakeholders. For each group, outline the specific activities that will be undertaken, the outputs that will be tailored for that particular group, and the benefits that will be provided. Specify what information will be communicated to each group, how it will be communicated, and which communication channels will be utilized for this purpose. Make connections to specific project deliverables, which will be included in the Gantt chart later. Most of page 8 will be devoted to part 2.3, the magnitude and importance of the project's contribution to the expected scientific, societal, and economic impacts. Separate the impacts by category. While some projects may not have direct economic impacts, try to identify any potential economic or technological impacts. For scientific impacts, consider the creation of knowledge or the development of new methods and instruments. Describe how the project will advance specific disciplines or multiple disciplines. For economic impacts, think about the potential creation of new products, services, or business processes. You can also mention specific outcomes in terms of percentage increase or decrease. For societal impacts, consider the potential policy changes or improvements, increasing public awareness on specific topics, or reducing negative social outcomes as a result of your project. In Part 3.1, Quality and Effectiveness of the Work Plan, Assessment of Risks and Appropriateness of the Effort Assigned to Work Packages, start by providing an overview of the work plan. This should include a description of the work packages, milestones, and deliverables, particularly those that have not been discussed elsewhere. Structure your narration based on the Gantt chart from the next page. Most of page 9 will likely be devoted to the Gantt chart, which will include the work packages, milestones, and deliverables. You may need to add descriptions for specific milestones, denoted with letter M, and deliverables, denoted with letter D, here as well, unless they are already well described in the overview. There is a useful R package called Gantrify that can assist you in creating a Gantt chart. The last page will include the risk management strategy and the quality and capacity of the host. For the risk management strategy, discuss the composition of the project committee, also known as the advisory board, and explain how project progress will be monitored for different parts or work packages. This monitoring will likely involve regular meetings with the advisory board or other stakeholders. Mention the use of progress reports and include a table describing the main risks, their types, research or administrative, and the contingency plan actions that will be taken. In the final section, 3.2, quality and capacity of the host institutions and participating organizations, including hosting arrangements, provide a description of the hosting institution, its awards, and its standing. Discuss the departments and teams that will play a key role in advancing the project, as well as how the researcher will be integrated into the team and institution. Highlight the services available to the researcher, such as research support, research communication, and knowledge dissemination. And this wraps up our guide to the overall structure of your MSCA proposal. By following these guidelines, you'll present your research in a clear and structured manner, giving it the best chance to shine in the evaluation process. Don't forget to check out my other videos on this topic, and I wish you the best of luck with your application.